ಸೈರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಗೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಮಸ್ಕುಮಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 the four mahavakyas we are currently studying of the four we have finished three prajnanam brahma tattvamasi ayam atma brahma any word reveals a knowledge we we'll start like that we'll understand any word reveals a knowledge when you say when you say apple that word apple reveals you what that word apples. what that word apples so a word reveals a word is that which reveals knowledge a knowledge that revealed by words has to necessarily have a property for a word to reveal it has to have a a property property means gunas that's why we say nama roopa guna karma so anything the world the word reveals knowledge and knowledge means it has this nama roopa guna karma so it reveals this it reveals this this four or word is nothing but a representative of this four again we repeat what is the word word is nothing but a collective representation of what is this nama roopa guna karma means any word can only do this much a word cannot do anything more than that if you can if you don't understand what the word reveals you go through it again and again and again till you get an understanding of what it is so word is that which you hear through shravana invariably at the level of shravana itself it is very difficult to understand so you got to go through it manana reflection because what the word is meaning you may have a, you may understand one thing or maybe they mean something different from what you have from what you are understanding so what they try is when the when it is communicated through words it reveals some properties not only it reveals properties recording in progress it is very subjective by nature it is very it is very subjective by nature rama is a person is one kind of knowledge rama is a human being is one kind of knowledge rama is a bad human being is another kind of knowledge so word reveals two kinds of knowledge rama is a human being is one kind of knowledge rama is a a bad human being is another kind of knowledge mysore is a city is one kind of knowledge mysore is a beautiful city is another kind of knowledge so words has this words always has this thing about revealing two types what are the two types one is revealing the object as it is another is what you what you understand out of it what you understand out of it is called subjective knowledge what it is is factual knowledge 
you follow what i am saying this is the difference fundamental difference so when we say rama is a person it reveals the knowledge of rama john is a human being it reveals that there is a person called john john is a bad human being john is a human being is one kind of knowledge john is a bad human being is another kind of knowledge so through analysis what do we try to do we try to remove all the subjectivity in associated with the knowledge and try to see it as it is that is the effort again i repeat since this subjectivity gets so mixed up what is the effort that we are making what is analysis the analysis is to remove the is to remove the subjectivity as much as possible and what is removal of subjectivity as much as possible when we say john is a bad human being the badness is my subjectivity john is a human being is a fact again john is a bad human being is my subjectivity john is a human being reveals about john now this mahavakya this vedic words what do they reveal do they reveal something as a fact or do they reveal something as a subjectivity it's a fact so we take the vedic statements as a a fact first we understand that there is no subjectivity involved here it is a a fact then comes the deeper in that fact there is a vakya and then there is a maha vakya it is factual statements but some statements are called vakyas some statements are called maha vakyas you have a body is a factual statement you have a mind is a factual statement you have kartrutva is a you have kartrutva is a factual statement the human being is divided into the five koshas is a factual statement all these kind of talks comes under vakyas this is one set of vakya another set of vakya is describing brahman the description of brahman is also not called as maha vakyas are you able to follow the description of brahman is also vakyam only nirguno nishkriyo nityo all this this is nirgunah nishkriyah nityah satchidananda all these are words that reveals a fact about that reveals the knowledge of brahman but they also cannot be called as mahavakya so vedas have 99% of the vedas have vakyas a few is mahavakya why we take that alone and call it as mahavakya because these statements specifically talk about jiva brahma aikyam since these words talks about jiva brahma aikyam we call it as the mahavakya so there are vakyas and the vakyas is of two fact versus your subjective your subjective understanding of the of the fact so we remove the subjective understanding and we want to see it as it is and when we see it as it is there are two there are two types you have to do karma yoga ganesh chaturthi today's ganesh chaturthi no you have to do you have to do modaka isn't it or laddu something all this is vakyas all this will not be called as mahavakyas because it tells you it, it it reveals something but 
Mahavakya is distinct and different from that. What is the distinction? He talks about Jiva, Brahma, Aikya. And these Mahavakyas are, lot of Mahavakyas are there. Throughout the Upanishads, Vedas, you find lot of Mahavakyas. Brahma Satyam Jaganvitya is one kind of Mahavakya. Ekameva Advitiyam. Ekameva Advitiyam is another another Mahavakya. Here we are seeing Prajnanam Brahma, Tattva Masi, Ayamatma Brahma, Aham Brahmasmi. These are all the Mahavakyas that we are studying. Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma. That is another Mahavakya. Shivoham is is another another Mahavakya. All these statements that reveals the oneness of what you see and Brahman. Both are when we say oneness means they say both are one and the same. Carefully follow. Mahavakya reveals identity. Mahavakya doesn't reveal partness. They will not say world is part of God. World is world is God. Similarly, the jiva, the macrocosm is not part of God. Similarly, microcosm is also not part of God. There is, it is only God. For Nama Rupa purposes, transactional purposes, there are there are differences. Just as there is a bangle, there is a necklace. Those differences are for transactional purposes. In essence, they are only gold. In the example, gold and ornaments, we will not say gold and bangle. It is understood that it is it is gold. It is understood that it is the nose ring, the, the ear ring, whatever be it. All it all implies what? Even though we say it is a nose ring, the value is because of the gold. The value comes to it because of the gold. Therefore, Mahavakyas are those that reveals the essential oneness. This has to be very clear. That's why we call them as Mahavakyas. Maha means great. Vakya is statements. Simple, precise statements that is used for penetrative thinking is Mahavakya. That is why they will say that this why can't they straight away say instead of that, they can say, what is that or what is this? No. It will be spoken deliberately so that there is lot of material for a person to, to reflect, to think, to understand. So Mahavakya is that when it reveals, it reveals directly for those who is not matured enough to reveal, to understand it directly, it gives material for thinking also. So Mahavakya does two purposes. Till now we have understood Mahavakya reveals the essential oneness. Second is if the person is pure when we say pure means evolved. For a, for a highly evolved grown person just the listening shravana itself is enough. All that the guru has to say is tattva masi shweta ketu and shweta ketu understood it. So for prepared mind shravana alone is enough. Just the guru just the guru vakya itself is enough. Like for example just listening to one word transforms. Now millions can hear that word. Millions and millions will be hearing that word, but nothing happens to the millions, but something happened to that one person, isn't it? All this may look like stories, that's why we give contemporary examples which makes it easy to, to understand. 
Ramana Maharshi, before he became Ramana Maharshi, he was playing in his house. He wasn't even paying attention to the guest. He was playing. The guest came to the house and uh, uh, the brother asked, from which temple are you? In the Goil Klam Ponel. See, nowadays we have to ask. What all movies you have seen, you have to ask nowadays. No? Yeah. What all movies you have seen? What all countries you have visited? These are the these are the conversation that happens now. In those days, these conversations they will not ask how many movies, which which countries you have seen, what what movie you saw, where did you go shopping? They don't ask these kind of questions. So so the asking what all temples you have visited? That fellow said I visited through an amulet. Who is the deity there? He said. Arunachala. He just heard the word Arunachala, that's all. He came back and asked to that person, repeated what, repeat what you said. He said, Arunachala, that's all. Third day, he was in Arunachala. Next night, now, people go and sit there also, nothing. Nothing happens. It means what? For a prepared mind, just Shravana is enough. Just listening, that statement alone reveals something to that person. Now, these are all very rare. These are all very rare categories. So, what is the other way now? So, what these people do from this Vakyas, and the Vakya elaborate Pandrata, there is a beautiful word, Vyakyanam they say. The Vakyas will be elaborated. When the Vakyas are elaborated, it will be called See, these are all the words that were used on everyday vocabulary, these words were there. But nowadays these words and all went out of vocabulary. Nobody is using these words nowadays. Clear? Anybody gives an elaborate thing, they will say. Periya Vyakyana Guttitarpavaru, they will say. Anything that is spoken in... Now what is the... So the Vakya will be elaborated for the one who doesn't who doesn't understand? So when they so when they do the elaboration, they have to do two things in that elaboration. What are the two things they have to do? They have to explain the statement at the same time, give a path to purify that person also. So Vyakyanam needs two things. It has to elaborate the statement. If it only elaborates the statement, it will be a mere scholarly, it will be a mere scholarly elaboration, which doesn't mean anything to anybody. So what these, what they do when they elaborate the Vakyas, they have to say what is the method to, what is the method to purify yourself so that in that purified personality, Mahavakyas reveals something. This is how we understand the Mahavakyas. Shravana itself is not helping means manana and nididhyasana. If Shravana itself doesn't help, manana nididhyasana has to be done. Why? Because the obstruction is there, the vasanas. Obstruction is there in the form of vasanas. Where there is obstruction in the form of vasanas, elaboration has to be has to be done. Very important thing here is, does the sentence word itself reveals the identity or constant reflection on the sentence reveals it? This is what we are, uh, in all these classrooms what are we doing? Since the Shravada itself is not brought about a change, what are we doing here? We are trying to elaborate it and go over the elaboration again and again and again. Because the word Shravana itself, nothing is revealed. So it is Manana and Nididhyasana that is going to reveal. So it means you need a statement for Nididhyasana and the Nididhyasana statement is I am Atma Brahma, which we saw last week. What is manana then? That is 
where wherever you take any of the classic vedantic literature wherever manana has to be done they will only take up tatvamasi they will only take up tatvamasi for elaboration other schools like ramanuja madhvacharya and all they don't accept there is something called mahavakya and they will not even talk about these statements they say there is no such thing called mahavakyas and all nor do they take it up in so so nor will they elaborate all this in in detail because the very the very idea there is aikyam is not possible here we say aikyam is here we say aikyam is possible therefore manana nididhyasana will be on a totally different platform correct it's a totally different it's a totally different platform from which we talk about this mahavakyas so even when we interpret bhagavad gita we say bhagavad gita is talking about one of our some tattva masi isn't it 18 chapters of bhagavad gita is to explain this word tattvam asi the the first six the middle six the last six all that we saw when we did the bhagavad gita so wherever elaboration happens for reflection tattvam asi will be taken for nididhyasana ayam atma ayam atma brahma so for reflection the mahavakya is tattvam asi for nididhyasana it is ayam atma brahma if a person does all this what happens aham brahma asmi if a person does all this comes to the fourth mahavakya the fourth mahavakya is aham aham brahma asmi a little bit of understanding of the word brahman is required now a little bit of an understanding of the word brahman what does brahman mean the sanskrit word brahman comes from the root bhr it means knowledge it means expansion it means all pervading the word the root word has so many meanings brahat brahadaranyaka brahadishwara isn't it the shiva in uh, in the tanjore temple is called brahat because you go and see there he is yeah he is so big he is 15 feet high isn't it i am just saying but definitely more than that <laughs> definitely more than that you see him he he goes tall and tall and tall isn't it so brahat means that tej if you remember how huge is that shiva there it, it goes he goes 15 feet 20 you can't you look so small in front of that so brahat means brahat means big that's why the upanishad also brahat aranyaka so so this word brahat which means huge big when we say big means big na big in the sense of all pervasive big not in the sense of comparison to small that you have to understand so when we say big in comparison to small no no it is not in comparison to small we call it as big it is big in the sense of all pervasive ever expanding ever expanding means how much ever you see it goes it goes much much beyond that there is this most uh, the most latest powerful telescope they have what is it james or something Huh? something 
they have now and i was reading something about this before we came before i came for the class i was reading something about that they thought using the telescope they can go to the end of the they can go to the end of the universe and see what is happening having gone to the end of the universe there is no end there because it has opened up another another beginning so it means how much ever how much ever you go it is it is bigger they thought logically speaking everything should be because we go by what we know only no what do we know we see the seed becoming the tree correct look at the logical fallacy eh? prasad carefully follow we see the tree becoming the seed so for anything to become big it should have been it should have been small at some point of time so it means the universe also was small at one point of time and then bang huh and then i don't know boom it became so big so they thought at the end something will be so small and they want to see how that small is becoming big but here we say there is no small it, it's not like it's not small becoming it's not small becoming big it is ever it is ever big it is it is ever big that's what ganesh also no the biggest possible head is the biggest possible head is the elephant, elephant head is the biggest possible head isn't it of all the things in the creation elephant so they put that elephant big so brahman root of the word is it is all pervasive another meaning of the word gr is knowledge if you, if you go into that it will become like a sanskrit grammar class so i am not going into clear so tempted to go but uh, second is brahman is not a proper name second thing that you have to understand is brahman is not a lord brahma is a proper name the creator brahman is not a proper name how do you understand that there is only ocean because of our limitations we will call it as pacific ocean and indian ocean there is only in reality there is only ocean for our understanding purposes we would call it as indian ocean and and pacific ocean in reality brahman is not a name of god it is not an attribute of god what it is then transcending all words a word that indicates that it cannot be captured by words is brahman that is why it is theologically they talk about it in two ways immanence and transcendence philosophically speaking now now this is a bit technical now but we need to know this also in mahavakyas though it is not necessary but we need to do this also because it gives a because we are we are gathering material for manana here for everything we are gathering material so theologically there are two ways of looking at it immanence and transcendence immanence is described as the divinity existing and extending into all parts of the creation that is he is immanent god is immanent in everything we say meaning the core of everything is is god but then we immediately correct it by another another term transcendence when we say if you keep it as immanence alone there will be a difficulty what is the difficulty the god is located 
in the the god is located as the core of something immediately they say no 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 it is brahman is immanence and brahman is transcendence then what it is a indescribable entity that we are talking about is brahman since it is indescribable the only way to know it is by becoming it since it cannot be described the only then how do we know it the only way to know it is becoming it brahma with brahmaiva bhavati is a statement the knower of brahman becomes brahman that knower of brahman who has become brahman because of their compassion or whatever it is they are trying to communicate to us that communication is aham brahmasmi that communication that they are revealing to us is called aham brahmasmi this is as far as the aham brahmasmi is concerned so what is brahman that indescribable entity is brahman okay aham what is the i because it is three words aham brahma asmi brahma we saw now we are trying to see this aham wherever you use the word i that word i has two things in it whenever you use the word i that i has two entities one is the enlivening another is the enlivened so i is a combination of spirit and matter so wherever you use the word i that i has two what are the two spirit plus matter the matter part is the body the mind the intellect the spirit part is brahman so when you say i you can you can figuratively say i to mean i am the body i am the mind i am the intellect or you can say i identifying with the the spirit brahman so wherever you use the word i what is it that you have to be aware of what is it that you have to ask yourself what are you identifying the i with what are you identifying the i with wherever you use the word i i me mind all are synonymous when we say i it means i and my me and mine na that's how it rhymes no correct i and i and my me and mine ha ah, adha rhyming isn't it so wherever you use the word i what are you identifying the i with with what you identify the i with in atma bodha we saw that in atma bodha we saw that you can say i am the bulb enlivened by electricity or you can say i am the electricity enlivening the bulb again you can say i am the i am the bulb enlivened by electricity or you can say i am the electricity enlivening the bulb the moment you identify with electricity you become the common denominator in everything the moment you identify with the bulb it is specific to that bulb prasad prida the moment you identify with electricity you become the common denominator of 
all the gadgets it's not only specific to that gadget if you identify with electricity if you identify with bulb it is specific to it is specific to that form so when we say aham brahma asmi what are what is this aham here what do you identify the word i with when you identify whenever you use the word i one part of you is aware of what do you mean by the word i at one level the i is body mind and intellect becomes is this god becomes that this body mind intellect is enlivened by that god so the closeness is to the closeness is in relation to the body mind intellect first what is purification here we gave an elaborate introduction no in the purified mind just hearing this tatva masi is enough to to understand what is the process of purification now the process of purification is what is that becomes this that god becomes this god that god is this and obviously it is so clear that when we say this obviously it doesn't refer to the instruments because the instruments that are limited by nature can never claim the instruments that are limited by nature can never claim any of the properties what are the properties all knowing all pervading all that cannot the, the 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 instruments can never claim why because the instruments can never be any of these one person can never become all knowing if all the knowledge is in the world put together does that become all knowing even then it doesn't become all knowing therefore the therefore the limitation of the instrument is what is the limitation you always have to deal with limited knowledge only when you know that you are always dealing with limited knowledge what happens this this recognizing the fact that you have to deal with limited knowledge only itself brings about an inner maturity that inner maturity is what in classic vedantic terms we call it as purification nowadays we don't like the word purification and all because it looks like we are dirty and from dirt we are getting purified so we have to use other words maturity and all that even it means the same thing no maturity means you are immature even then it is the yeah, even then it is the same but uh, every generation likes every generation like new new words and you also have to keep using this new new words so what is this pure what is this maturity at any given point of time you can you never you can never become all knowing it means you always operate with limited knowledge the fact that you are always operating with limited knowledge it means what limited knowledge means limited understanding limited understanding mean limited understanding mean limitation in action limitation in action means limitation in fruit with limited knowledge how can you get unlimited fruit so limited knowledge means limitation in knowledge implies limitation in action limitation in action implies limitation in in fruit straight away what happens recognizing the limitation and disassociating from it is called vairagya this is called vairagya this is called sanyasa you can use any term you can use sanyasa you can call it vairagya any word you can use all means the the same so from this what happens this 
this purified personality remembering i am atma brahma continuously identifying the aham with the electricity and not the and not the bulb brings about an understanding that is why aham brahma asmi it's called anubhava vakya it's called anubhava vakya anubhava vakya means because of again limitations of language we have to say it it's not an anubhava even though we call it as anubhava vakya means statement of experience though technically we don't call it as experience but some word has to be told no what other words you can use because of the limitation of the language they have to use the word anubhava but actually it is not an actually it's not an anubhava because experiences are that which has a beginning and an end that is where aham brahma asmi is not from bondage to liberation this is very important all along we are talking from bondage to liberation when we come to aham brahma asmi it is reversed completely what is the reversal it is not from bondage to liberation it is an understanding that bondage never happened a state where you understand there was never a thing called bondage is aham aham brahmasmi you can call it understanding you can use the word experience doesn't matter but all these words doesn't actually convey anything why because all along we talk from bondage to liberation as you are you are in bondage what is the bondage bondage by vasanas bondage by the limitations of the body mind intellect raga dvesha blah 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 we saw we say so many things and then we talk about karma bhakti jnana yogas we talk about all these disciplines all along you need to have mukshatva vairagya shat sampat all that we talk only to come to the level of liberation and what happens in liberation upon liberation what is this aham brahmasmi revealing aham brahmasmi doesn't reveal that you have become brahman aham brahmasmi reveals that you are already there you are only that always that is i keep here so aham brahmasmi is not an anubhava in the sense of becoming brahman it is a it is recognition that you are that you are that already you have been that always that is where tattva masi and aham brahmasmi becomes one and the same as you are you are brahman is what tattva masi says aham brahmasmi also should reveal the same thing are you able to follow if you say i have experienced brahman then tattva masi and aham brahmasmi are different how can it be the same no 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 they are not different tattva masi what tattva masi reveals from the guru aham brahmasmi is the recognition by the shishya but both are one and the same it means tattva masi same thing when it told by the guru it will be called tattva masi same thing when it is said by the shishya it will be called aham brahmasmi so the other side of the coin of tattva masi is aham brahmasmi therefore we reconcile and say correct tattva masi and aham brahmasmi are not they are not different they are one and the they are one and the the same how are they one and the same in this method they are one and the same because aham brahma asmi asmi means ever present how do we understand that asmi
everything all that we gain in this life in this world is a product of action all that is gotten is the product of action this experience of brahman can never be a product of any action all that is gotten here is gotten through action isn't it the punya karma is gotten through action the papa karma is gotten through action punya and papa we are saying it figuratively we don't have to repeat it again and again and again since we all understand that i'm just using it in a very figuratively the punya karma is also product of action the papa karma is also product of action so all that is gotten here is the product of action number 1 number 2 that which is the product of action has to be sustained by continuous action again that which is a product of action has to be sustained by continuous action because if you stop acting you will lose it isn't it painting stop the for few years brush is not moving no isn't it the brain is saying but hand is not the brain is saying but the hand is not and is not moving why because that which is the product of action has to be sustained by continuous action to to get it is action and and to maintain what you got you you got to keep doing it okay you will be doing 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 but at some point of time the doing stops as in death at some point of time all doing comes to an end as in death then what happens again we have to start all over us sir again from kindergarten so scary no again we have to start, again we have to crawl. okay seeing others crawling is very good seeing the other child laughing and smiling is very good now you imagine that you have to become all that again oh my god isn't it so all that is the product of action has to be sustained by action and you cannot there is no eternal action there is no such thing called eternal action therefore what happens arjuna asks this question in bhagavad gita what all this will come to an abrupt end useless because one day action will stop we saw that no in bhagavad gita all this i am doing one day one day it will become useless why because one day the death will happen so it means i have to start all over again nahi kalyana krit kaschit durgatim tat gachati the answer he gave the doer of good arjuna never goes to durgati ki sadgati only the path of sadgati can never become durgati but arjuna could not understand that therefore he said you will be born in this family of wise yogis you will be born here you will be born there some stories he gave which was more which is which is more appealing than the actual philosophy than the actual knowledge what is the knowledge all will go away arjuna because it is a product of action the brahmatvam is not a product of action therefore where it can go where it can go how it can go where will it go how it will go why because it is there already no for you to go from one place to another place movement can happen only in limitations the unlimited there cannot be any movement in the all pervading thing again movement can happen only in only when you are restricted to a form movement is possible 
in an all pervading thing there is no there is no movement possible some time back i wasn't here now i am here maybe in another 30 40 minutes i won't to be i won't to be here why the form leaves one place and come to another it means movement is possible only where there is a form or all only a form can move a formless can never where it can move to what movement implies a purpose what is the purpose for it to for it to move therefore aham brahmasmi is not an indication of moving from aham brahmasmi is not an indication of moving from bondage to liberation aham brahmasmi is recognizing the fact what is the fact nitya muktosmi you can say aham brahmasmi or you can say nitya muktosmi nitya muktosmi means nitya mukta asmi nitya mukta asmi means i am the ever liberated one i am the ever liberated one how do you understand this ever liberated one the rope says the the rope says in relation to the snake i am nitya muktosmi the rope can say that no imagine the rope talking the rope can say in relation to the snake i am nitya mukta because the rope will never agree to one thing what the rope will never agree to one thing the rope will not agree what is that one thing that rope will not agree snake it will never agree that i was a snake and i became the rope imagine the rope where to say that it means what it is still believing that it's a snake only what is the indication that you have that it has understood that rope refuses to accept that at any point of time there was was there a snake at any point of time the rope will say no that is nitya muktosmi that is aham aham brahmasmi even if you want to understand brahman as anubhava vakya understand it as this anubhava what is this anubhava bondage never happened but we cannot understand that experience because what are we experiencing we are experiencing bondage we are experiencing limitations we are experiencing sorrow and suffering we are experiencing joy we are experiencing sorrow why only sorrow and suffering we experience joy also no isn't it ganesha vandra grah radhana it's a day of joy today not a day of sorrow today it's a day of it's a day of joy so experience means there is joy there is sorrow aham brahmasmi says even if you want to call it as an experience call it as this experience what is it experience aham brahmasmi experiences i was ever liberated never in this thing called bondage didn't exist at all that's where it's about vedanta bondage to liberation bondage to liberation bondage to liberation we will talk at the last point yeah apre dose etri podra madri adu doesn't it at the last minute they just apre etri podranga isn't it borota etri podra madri adu doesn't it they just uh, flip it Yes, yes. it's dosa you know when we make dosa it is cooked to cook to cook, as we are about to take it they will flip it similarly this you are in bondage understand you have to get liberated liberated liberate and then you are like so geared about liberation and all that and then finally you go there 
அப்படியே இதை சேஞ்ச் அப்படியே பிளேட்டை மாற்றிட்டு இருக்கு இல்லையா லோக்கல் சென்னை பாஷையில் சொல்லணும்னா அப்படியே பிளேட்டை மாற்றிட்டாங்க சார் அப்படியே இதை சேஞ்ச் வாட் இதை சேஞ்ச் வாட் ஆர் யூ டாக்கிங் ஃப்ரம் பாண்டேஜ் டு லிபரேஷன் தெர் இஸ் நோ சச் திங் கால் பாண்டேஜ் அட் ஆல் தட் இஸ் அஹம் பிரம்மாஸ்மி ஸோ அஹம் பிரம்மாஸ்மி இஸ் அனுபவ தட் டசன் மேக் யூ ரியலைஸ் தட் யூ ஆர் becoming brahm you that you have become brahman aham brahmasmi is a anubhava that tells you that you are always brahman you are always brahman which we can never understand i am a limited person i am self realized now sir that is very appealing no i was ignorant in the past and then december 15th some day i didn't i'm just saying some day i'm giving a uh, december 15th i got liberated actually i got liberated on 15th december only you got 15th december you got liberated wow correct vedanta will come and say you are still in you are still in darkness only why because from where did you get this notion that on 15th december you got liberated because aham brahmasmi says you are never in bond nitya mukto asmi nitya mukta asmi is what aham brahmasmi is all about therefore what is this aham brahmasmi mahavakya revealing It's extraordinary revelation it is Yeah, this Aham Brahmasmi is fantastic. Tattva Masi is all Mahavakyas are fantastic. But uh, this is something so. Up there they change the entire. If, if, if Tattva Masi changes it as a teaching, Aham Brahmasmi changes it as your knowing. Tattva Masi is teaching. Aham Brahmasmi is knowing. Okay. How do you understand that? When you hear Tattva Masi, straight away it will be rejected. Straight away it will be rejected. And say this is, this is sheer arana. You know, all of that. Straight away we will reject it as untruth. Nonsense. How can you say Tattva Masi? It is sheer nonsense. And then after a period of time, continuing to associate with this, maybe it is possible maybe it is possible a doubt is planted maybe it is possible and you continue with this you will still say maybe it is a fact are you able to follow how that how the growth happens from outright rejection to considering it as a possibility to considering it as a fact or to stay you say ah this is a fact this is a fact the guru will say go back go back and start all over why because fifth stage you have to say this alone is the fact nothing else matter nothing else doesn't when you say this is a fact there can be two facts what are the two facts that you are a limited person and you have to become brahman the fourth say no 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 the guru says go back vedas will say go back what is going back going back in place this is the only fact for rest are all is asat not facts sat and asat satyam and mithyam so what you outrightly rejected in the beginning is what you accept at the end acceptance as in a recognition that you are that already are you able to follow this is how the transformation happens all transformation happens by this method only what is the methodology of transformation first you you can't even take it 
straight away you will reject it as no no this things is not it's it's an outright rejection vedanta says okay you reject this but consider all other things that we are saying since all other things they are saying seems to be very very correct then the doubt comes maybe maybe it is possible maybe and then from maybe the chain the maybe it is possible to yes it is possible and then you go through whatever the recommended practices are you understand this is a this is a fact when you say when the guru says tatvamasi and when you acknowledge it as a fact is the fourth stage what is the fifth stage when the guru says tatvamasi you should say okay. aham brahmas look at the conversation abhi runu teaching na isn't it week after week after week pesne irukudathu vijayaranga Yeah, decades are based on the best of the world. We keep for decades, we keep talking the same thing. What, how it should be the teaching? The Guru should say, the Guru says, Tattva Masi. Immediately, the Shishya says, Aham Brahmas. Out of the, over. That's it. It is, education is, over. But that is not very dramatic. That is not very dramatic. Yeah, little it doesn't. it's so dramatic it's so nice if you are but then how to how to get there also savitpani shrotriyam brahmanishtam go this has to be heard from anybody can say this word but this word will have a meaning when the one who says it with the anubhava the one who is so convinced that aham brahmasmi is called brahmavit is established the not the one who not the one who says tatvamasi the one who is established aham brahmasmi that shishya becomes the guru because when he says aham brahmasmi when the next person comes what that aham brahmasmi person will say tatvamasi that's how the guru shishya parampara continues so the what is the guru shishya parampara they have, they say only one thing what ஒரே காயின் வச்சு மாத்தி மாத்தி காமிச்சுருப்பாங்க and wherever words are necessary to transact adhi per manda buddhi n per manda buddhi means dull intellect words are required for transactions for dull intellects dull or dumba dull la irukravanga kada then what is the ideal way that's where dakshina murti taught that's how adi guru first guru dakshina murti taught. how he taught he wasn't saying anything the disciples weren't saying anything but something communicate something transpired telepathy illa kekkuda isn't it yeah what transpired maybe bio abdullah gade what it means is the the understanding what is understanding bondage never so aham brahmasmi is a recognition what is a recognition it's not that i have become brahman i am as me i don't know if you say i am i am brahman does it talk about the continuity in english language i don't know i am not so familiar with this english grammar at all in the english le pesna irundha kuda english grammar la is very ah uh, present continuous than adu yeah correct it's present continuous Sanskrit grammar wasn't that difficult. The English grammar is very confusing. I don't know. So, Aham Brahmasmi says, I am Y 
even when there was a snake the rope refuses to accept the rope refuses to accept that there was a snake at any point of time that is why rope we will not use waker and dreamer rope and snake is what we will use because even in waker and dreamer the dreamer existed for even though it is he, he existed at least you have to give him the temporary reality but in the case of rope and snake you cannot give snake even a temporary reality because it's all product of imagination ignorance that is why we we use the word rope we use example rope and rope and snake asmi the sanskrit word asmi is a very beautiful word it talks about transcending the time or that which is ever the same at all three periods past present and future the word asmi refers to something the same in the past present and and future it is not referring only to the only to the present as such the sanskrit asmi i don't know whether it is the same in english or not maybe it is the same also i don't know but the asmi refers here to the past the present the future it is the the same yes ganesh sir is it correct to assume then all the only one fact among the past is the only fact all the rest are yes is correct that? yes I am making that two small statement. All the stuff is there. All are vidya only. That is why we say at the fourth stage. Yes. That's the only fact. Yes. That's why we said at the fourth stage, you will say this is a fact. Guru says, no, no. Still, you have to do some work. What is the work? This is the. This is the only fact. What is the only fact? Snake never. snake never existed at all is the only fact so from outright rejection to saying that this is the only fact this is the shravana madana shravana manana vididhyasana process from outright rejection to considering it as a possibility and then to to consider the possibility as a fact and from the fact you move on to say this is the only fact this is aham brahmasmi the fourth mahavakya with this we conclude for with this we conclude for today and we'll continue with uh, the mahavakyas next session also we'll try to summarize all the four into what all we said in various mahavakya we'll try to see it in in one thing and then we'll we'll continue next time